73 fans, welcome back to another episode of the 73 Garage. My name is Brandon. Here we are again. Check out the new video that I just posted. Uh, that'll kind of transition you into this video so you can see what we have happening today. So to get started, we are going to be installing the IRA Diesel T4 uppipe kit along with the pedestal and all that cool stuff. So if there's anybody that's going to be in the market potentially for a T4 transition for their 7.3 power stroke, I will show you some of the things that it basically involves and entails. So we'll get right on that. Second, I want to go ahead and show everybody the finished painting product or product on the heads and they're inside of the block and we will hopefully be doing the water pump today and potentially even the high pressure oil pump so let's get started okay here's how the heads and the rest of the block turned out not too bad for a spray can job these were uh the heads that i had purchased from facebook marketplace when they were down at the machine shop they sandblasted them and got them back to the i guess raw material just that nice cast iron. These things are heavy. If anyone's never picked one of these things up, they, they weigh right, I would have to guess between 70 and 80 pounds. They are extremely heavy. I was going to have them ported and polished, but the process for doing that, just from what I've heard, is it's very long and extensive because the material is so much harder, obviously, than aluminum. Like the actual material is actually difficult to, to get perfect every time um, when you go ahead and port these things. So I ended up leaving them. I didn't know ring them. I left them how they were just so again, running the head studs, the, the ARP head studs on this. And I've had a lot of luck with them. So I should be fine for this. So let's jump right into what we have going on today. So I already started here. Basically the way the irate system works, and I'm going to go ahead and grab the up pipes in just a second, just to show everybody. Basically what had happens is it deletes the pedestal that the factory turbo sits on back here. So this is your oil supply. This is this is part of the standpipe system in the in the oil valley or out oil oil system I should say, and this is your drain. So obviously we have two brand new O rings, nice prep surface that's going to be going in here, and I'm going to show you how all that works. This is your turbo drain, so the oil basically is pushed up through here. This is no longer this drain is no longer utilized because it doesn't run through the pedestal. It actually kind of just stays there basically, but we still have to seal it. The supply comes, and I'll when I get everything set up, I'll show you how everything works. Basically, your oil is pushed up the back of the engine through a nice braided line that I rate supplies and there's a fitting on top of the turbo and the oil basically runs down and over all the journal bearings and everything inside and it drains right here. This is where the factory, if you have an OBS truck, this is where the factory uh, tandem fuel pump sits. There's a cam lobe on the OBS trucks only. The Super Duties, this is no longer there because they switched to an electric style fuel system. As the cam lobe spins, it hits a tap it on the bottom of the fuel pump and actuates the pump and it pumps fuel from the tank and so on and so forth. So this actually is utilized uh, for both trucks, uh, Super Duty and OBS, and it just basically a drain goes in here with an O-ring into the block so the oil can come from the, from the oil pan up through that line and down back over the turbo, all the journal bearings and back into the engine. It just drains straight down into the pan. So let's show you some of the components that the irate system consists of. Okay, just to show everybody a few of the options here, this is basically the option that I've been running. This is the Irate Diesel T4 kit for the 7.3 liter power stroke. This kit I've been running, this particular kit I've been running for, I'd say, coming up on two years now. It's awesome. It gives you a wider, a wider turbo market, so you can run from Garrett turbos to Borg Warner turbos. I've even seen a couple guys on the internet throw Turbonetics turbos on these trucks, but this just opens up your, your ability to run a larger turbo... Um, I guess turbo field uh, is basically, I guess, the right word. You, you, it just opens up your options to, to turbochargers for these trucks. Okay, so starting with the pedestal, I remember I, I just showed everybody basically all the mounting, all the mounting stuff where uh, the oil is supplied and drained. So you could see this is this factory Super Duty turbo pedestal. This is basically the same footprint as what Irate Diesel cuts out. It's a nice thick steel. Uh, and it basically matches the exact thing. The only thing that's really different is the hardware is obviously shorter. The Super Duty or the OBS pedestals utilize a long 13 millimeter bolt, whereas obviously the bolts for this are gonna be much shorter. Same exact thread pitch, everything goes right in. So we basically go in right there. Now here, I'll show you in just a second. Here's the three mounting holes, which, which are gonna match right up. Let me see if I can get my camera working. Are gonna match up with these three mounting holes on the actual turbo flange itself. 
that kind of hold everything in there. Here's our rear two, and this is what the, the standpipe that I was referring to when I was showing everyone the block just a second ago. This has your, your braided line that threads in. This is your oil supply, and your drain is under here, obviously, and it's sealed up with an O-ring, so we're not gonna have anything uh, passing through there. Okay, there, here's, here's your up pipes. Uh, these are, this is their older style kit. The new kits have really nice bellows. I've had good luck with these, but I've seen them, I've just seen pictures of these things that get blown through through a lot of heating and things like that. I've had no issues. This is all one solid piece. They are flexible, so if you're gonna do this at, on your truck with the engine in it, I've done it before. It's not too bad of a, not too bad of a job. You gotta get in there and twist it just a little bit to make everything happen, but it all works. Just It utilizes pretty much the same hardware. It's a 10 millimeter bolt with a 13 millimeter nut on both sides and you tighten it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and start getting this on the engine and show everybody what that looks like. So before we get the pedestal on, uh, we gotta get our new O-rings going. These are brand new O-rings that I purchased. These were in, 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 brand new in the bag. So you can see obviously the different sizes are just gonna go right where they need to go. This is, I've already prepped this surface, so this is ready to rock. This could basically just sits right on here and the pedestal is gonna sit right on top. So let's go ahead and grab that. This can only go on one way. The bolt, uh, the bolt pattern is, <laughs> you can't flip it. It only goes on one way, but I always make sure that my mounting, that my mounting surface is pretty clean. And again, this is just freshly, freshly painted. So this basically sits right on top here. Let's see if I can get that nice and snug. There we go. And I'll go ahead and install that hardware. But as you can see that when you start to tighten everything down, this should seal up nicely. And that's the job of that O-ring there. So let's get some bolts in here and get it tight. Before we get started, I've already cleaned all my hardware up. I, I like to have nice clean hardware. I don't like to put greasy stuff back in. That's just a habit that I've made. Something my, my dad's kind of instilled in me. Uh, it just makes everything go together nicer. Everything comes apart a little bit nicer. This is what we're going to be using. Uh, I think I mentioned before in my past videos the importance of putting anti-seize on things. This is a high temp. Let me see if I can get this in the camera. This is a high temp formula I just got from, uh, let's make a focus in on this here. I just got this from O'Reilly Auto Parts. It works great. It's up to 2,000 degrees, but it's a thread lubricant. It's, uh, it doesn't really seal, but it helps keep everything loose. So you can still tighten up. It helps you torque the bolts and, and nuts and hardware down a little bit better, but it also keeps everything lubed up. So if you got to take something apart, you're not going to be cursing and, and throwing stuff across the, the garage or shop or wherever you are trying to get things apart because it's too tight and it's seized up from heat expansion and contraction. So I like to get this on here just basically a good amount, not too crazy, but basically just paint it on there and just makes your life a whole lot easier if you got to get something apart, especially turbo components, exhaust components, things that are going to be seeing a lot of heat. It makes your life 10 times easier. It is messy. You can't really get away with not getting messy with this stuff. So this is just a habit that I've, I've done. I already have one here that's already put a little extra on there. I hate to say that I'm paranoid, but I like to, I'd rather have it and it'd be ready to go than have to question my installation. Get them started. I don't like to tighten things down. I'm sure many people who have worked on things before know that just put things in usually finger tight and then tighten it up because especially loose components like this will, will uh, start to tighten up in certain spots and then when you go to put one in you think it's stripped you think it's cross-threaded and it's really just either bolts or nuts or whatever you're working on is actually just too tight so right Next step, just go ahead and start tightening these things down. I like to go in a, a star pattern as best I can. All right, so I'm happy with that. Let's go ahead and get the up pipes in place. Before we start tightening everything up, I wanted to basically mock this up just to show everybody what I'm gonna be doing here. So these come in right here. I usually do the bolt the bolt through, you get your nut on and you can tighten it up like that. This I had to do a little differently. This is where I have my, uh, my pyrometer. Thermocouple goes and sits in here in the uh, driver's side exhaust manifold. And if you have the bolt flipped the other way, you will not be able to remove the bolt. 
So you could, I mean, I know there's ways around it, but this is how I've, how I've done it and how I've, I even installed it the first time, but just to show everybody. So that's here. And then on the dry, on the passenger side, I have it set up. Uh, both of these are going to be the same way. I have the bolt going through towards the up pipe. And this is basically how they sit. <clears throat> just to come up here up top, just so everybody can see, get my camera to work here. Here's our three mounting holes that is going to be utilized for the, the rest of the hardware, which are the same hardware. Everything is all the same length. There's nothing different. So we're just going to lube those up and get them right into the pedestal and show everybody what that looks like when we're all finished up. Here's the finished product. We have our three bolts that we just discussed. Have those nice and tight. <clears throat> those are in the right spot. They're nice and anti-seized up. And uh, basically the way that I did this was I like to do these first. <clears throat> I just want to try something out newer or a different way of doing it. But I got these on first and then I went ahead and tightened these up because what happens is if you tighten these up, I feel like, I mean, they still flex in the middle here where the bellows are. That's what they're designed to do. I think either way is going to be fine, but I did it the opposite way last time. And I actually, when I was taking this thing apart, one of these had, this one in particular had actually backed itself out. So I just wanted to try a little differently, made those snug. So we're ready to go on both of these sides here. Again, these are all, these are all NICs and ready to, ready to rock. So that's all buttoned up. Now the next thing that we're doing here is Remember, I think the earlier I was discussing the drain line. Here's the drain line. Uh, my dad was nice enough to get this ready for me. So this is just nice braided TFE line. The uh, firewall was rubbing. Let me get my camera to focus. Was rubbing some row air along back here and had caused the uh, the braided line to start to fray. So we don't want we don't want to you know introduce any sort of leak or any or have the potential for a leak here. So got a new line up, and I'm going to set the camera up in just a couple minutes and. We basically are gonna test fit this. We're gonna mount the turbo up here and we're gonna kind of get our angle uh, with that, with the with that first top line, that, that drain line or supply line that we discussed earlier and with our drain line as well. So I'll get the camera set up and we'll show you how that goes. As you can see, we have the turbo uh, ready on the, it's on the, it's on the pedestal here. If you come on around, I'll show you how this basically mounts up here and we'll get to the drain in just a second. But just to see how this goes. So remember we talked earlier, you have your supply which comes up through your stand pipe, and this is where the old drain was, which is sealed up. So here's the new line. We got it here. Uh, it's all sealed up. We have we use a liquid Permatex, a uh, high temp Teflon, like or a liquid Teflon, I should say. So your oil comes up. The oil it oils from the top here on the top of the turbocharger, and if you come on around this side, here is the drain that this utilizes. And the drain, you basically just thread the drain in, and then there's actually a, a uh, fitting that we have that we just kind of want to get the angle. I'm not going to secure it yet because this fitting here, when we put this on, I also, in conjunction with the Teflon tape, I like to use again, that liquid Teflon. This threads right in here just to make that angle. And that's basically how it's going to sit when it's on the truck. The turbo sits just about this high. And if you come around, I can show you the, the clearance issues. I know people have asked me why I switched to the IRA plums. There's a lot more clearance here. I can, I can get my entire hand under here. This is a, for people that are wondering, this is a 369 SXE Borg Warner turbocharger. This is uh, offered in a few of the IRA diesel T4 kits, and it's a fantastic turbo. I've had no problems with it. It runs good, but again, I think I'm gonna go a little bit bigger next year just for some more power because I have the bottom end in it now. But uh, that's basically all that's really remains for that. So we're gonna kind of get that loosely fitted, and when the engine goes back into the truck, that's when we'll go ahead and button everything up and tighten everything down and seal it up and get ready for the start. So. That's all done. We're gonna jump into a fuel injectors and glow plugs next, and we'll get the camera set up so you can see how that goes. We have the driver's side is all taken care of. I figured I would just show the, the installation of the last one instead of having everybody watch me install eight fuel injectors. It's kind of monotonous. So I have the last one. Uh, Dad's got it. I'm gonna walk over and show you in just a second, but this is basically how everything looks. I had intended on getting the, where are they hiding? Uh, the glow plugs in today. However, I need a, 10 millimeter quarter inch drive deep socket, uh, a three inch drive deep hits the rocker arm and I, I can get it, but you'd have to really lean on the rocker or the push rod. And I really don't want to do that. So and all, all this stuff is relatively new. So I really don't want to do it. I want to do it the right way. So I have uh, another two days to keep going on this thing. So just to show you here again, it's on the left side. This is the passenger side. Now everything looks pretty good. Still have to get all the under valve cover harnesses in, all the other plugs, things like that. So this is how the injector hole looks before it goes in. You have a hold down bolt up top. 
and a different bolt down here. I'll show you the difference. This is the one that goes on the bottom. This is the one you actually have to remove. Mine were removed because I had the heads worked on. But if you could see the difference in the bolt, uh, I think I could zoom in here. Let's try this. Ooh, there we go. So you can see the top of this, of the hardware here has more of a flat spot. There's no threads as this one has just a very small amount of uh, just hard bolt and thread on the bottom. So that's kind of how that works. Um, so we're going to get that installed. And dad's holding the fuel injector. People have not seen a 7.3 fuel injector. They are fairly large. Mine came back from Swamps. These, like I said, they're all, they were flow tested, re-o-ringed. So very important before you install any of these, you always want to make sure that you have a, let me see if I, can, if I can get this thing to focus. Copper washer is very important. All right, while I'm installing, I'm going to talk about a few other important things when you install these things that just make the process easier and instead of half-assing it and, and going too fast. So that's how this looks. The collar stays on. We still have to put on the deflectors and that's about it. So I'll show you how these things go in. Here is the normal procedure to what I do. So I get the injector. These actually are covered in diesel fuel swamps, diesel flow them, like I said, but get yourself some nice fresh oil. This is all clean oil. Just have some extra sitting around. So I lube up, uh, try to get the whole body. It's okay if you get some on the nozzle, it's all right, but it just, the less in the cylinder, the better. But I usually put a, a decent amount all over the O-rings, so it really helps slide into that injector cup. You never have too much oil on these things. I mean, I guess you can have too much oil, but. So get it all lubed up all the way around so it's, it's all ready to go. Okay, I always, anytime I, I do this, when it's in the truck, it's a little different. There's gonna be oil in there. I suggest getting like a, a vacuum pump or of some sort to try to get all the oil out of the cylinders. Kind of the, I say, I say, and no offense, but the redneck way is to, some guys throw the ignition on and they turn the key and, and turn the motor over and put towels over the, the valve train and it spits oil over the place. That'll work, but it's just, it's messy. If you want to do it the clean way, just get yourself like a little, uh, little vacuum thing. So again, just to, just to make sure we have our O-ring, so we're good, everything looks good, nice and lubed up. Make sure that collar sits forward, it has to go over this bolt here. So as you slide it right in, Hold that up. I'll usually push with, with my hand just a little bit, get yourself a rubber mallet, and I can you, you can reach from the bottom here and push up, and then you basically want to hit this, and you'll get, sometimes you'll even hear a ping at the bottom of the head. So there you go. Everyone could have heard that, but that's basically how you know your injector's seated. Pull that collar down, and I just tap on it real easy. You don't have to go crazy. Just tap on it pretty easily. And then another quick way I'll even do too is I'll even come back and check and look down the injectors. You can see they're all sitting at the same height. All right, these torque down to 10 foot pounds, which I had to do the conversion online. It come, the true is, is, is inch pounds. I have an inch pound. If you don't have a torque wrench that goes low, I have an inch pound wrench here and it converts to 120 inch pounds, which actually, which equates to 10 foot pounds. So we'll go ahead and get this installed. Just remember, when you put these in, the true way to get these things seated is with a rubber mallet, nice easy pressure on the back as you tap. You do not want to rely on just the bolts to hold this down. It will not, they will not seat properly. The O-rings will not be seated properly in the head. So I start these with my finger. Get this off here, it's kind of annoying with, with gloves, but try to keep as much oil off your fingers and, as you can. So I'll basically get this started with my hands. Get a few turns on until it starts to get snug, and then I'll switch over to my wrench. This is 120 inch pounds, which equates to right around 10 foot pounds. I just looked it up online. They have conversions online, just websites. Nice, easy. All right, there we go. So all eight fuel injectors are now secure, and we're gonna put the, it's kind of boring, we're probably not gonna show it, but the, uh, the oil deflectors, where all the used oil comes out of the fuel injectors, those are gonna come in up top here. So we're gonna get those handled. Real, real quick before we go to the next section here, when you put those in, try to torque them. They're like a cast, a very, like a cast metal almost. Very, very brittle. They're almost like, um, they're like a powdered metal. So they're very, very brittle. So you don't need to go crazy on it when you do it. Just finger tight basically, and they're right around nine foot pounds. We are done for today. Pretty happy with all the progress. We took care of a lot. Fuel injectors are in. There's those deflectors I was telling everybody about. Those go right in. 
Those are nine foot pounds, just confirmed, but I, I looked it up online. Those are nine foot pounds, 240 inch pounds, if anyone is really wondering about that. Uh, so that's all taken care of. Everything's good. Uh, pretty happy, like I said, with all we've got taken care of. We got, we got that handled. That was something that's good to do outside the truck if you, ha if you have the opportunity to do it, if the engine is out. Doing it inside is a... It's, it works, but it's a little more of a pain in the ass. He's got to reach around and you got everything. You got to lay on the engine. So that's kind of a pain, but overall, everything's looking good. Today is Monday. Tomorrow, I have to work in the morning, but when I come home, we are going to install the glow plugs. We're going to get the uh, the new adrenaline high pressure oil pump mounted in the valley. We're going to get the high pressure oil lines run as well. And I think we're going to try and do the water pump. Not too sure. We'll see how far we get. We should have enough time to do that. I'll have the rest of tomorrow evening and on Wednesday as well to work on this thing. I'm going to try to get this video out this week as well. I know I just, po I just posted the new one today. So go check that out. That's your precursor for this video, but we are moving pretty quickly here. So everything's starting to get closer and closer. I'm going to try and paint those valve covers. I I'm sorry. I'm going to try and clear coat those valve covers. I have them sitting in the truck. They've been painted. But I want to keep them off the ground, keep, them, um, keep the oil off of them. So all I need to do is basically clear coat those, let those dry, get those on, under valve cover harnesses, all that stuff. We'll probably try and get in tomorrow or on Wednesday. And this thing is looking pretty good right now. That's all I have for this video. As always, I appreciate everybody's attention and love for this project. It's come a long way. A little bit more to go, but we will be out soon uh, running this thing around on the streets and seeing what kind of power this engine makes. Cannot wait for that moment. I'll be sharing it with everybody. I'm going to see if I can maybe go live when I when I start the uh, truck up for the first time. I think that'd be kind of cool to see how much attention we can get with that. That'd be something I'd be, it'd be new to me, so it'd be something cool to try out. But like I said, please stay tuned. A lot of stuff coming up. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, share. Uh, tell people you know. we got a lot of cool stuff going on here. If they're interested in 7.3s or even interested in seeing one of these things be built, tell them to come on over and check the page out, 7.3 Garage. That's all I got for this one, guys. Appreciate the attention and the love. My name is Brandon. We will see you next time.